Well, you know who this person is. It's a Vitruvian man, a silver point by Leonardo da Vinci, uh, exceedingly famous, and did you ever notice before that it's got a wheel of numbers around it? just so happens that this is an alternative version of it. Uh, it was discovered recently in a long-lost codex uh, that has reached the present time. And we're going to try to understand what these numbers mean. Um, the title that's being given to this manuscript is The Circle is Complete. And let us find out why. So, let me switch to another tab, and we're going to investigate this, and the title I have given the discussion is Equilibrium and Cyclicality in Congruent Functions, and I apologize for that watermark. Um, so, I'm going to define a sequence that cycles as a set of input and output operations whose common difference is sum to zero. So here is the wheel of numbers that we saw around the Vitruvian man, and they represent, as I just said, input output operations whose common difference is sum to zero. And why is this significant? Well, I'm going to explain that in a little bit, but let me just say now that you will notice there is a input 17, output 17 operation, which means it's the equilibrium point of this sequence. And that we have two sets of inverse operations, 14 minus 14 and minus 20, 20, which are very significant uh, in that they make the complete cycle possible. So let me just um, further define a cycle as a single set of integers with each member occurring once. It has two inverse operations at the equilibrium point of the function. Now what function are we talking about? One can define a function with three input congruence classes and output operations where x is any odd integer and n is some fixed integer. So without going into this too deeply we have the input x and a manipulation is occurring to it according to its congruence. Um, and you can imagine x to be any number including 1, any odd number including 1. So this could represent 3x plus 1 and it would work essentially the same way for the odd numbers. Um, now there exists for such a function an equilibrium point where the input and output of x are equal. That is, there's an operation input x, output x, and that's what we just mentioned before for 17 to 17. Uh, I won't go further into the three operations of the function uh, as it's not really necessary in order to follow this argument. Uh, one can show that for this function where n is greater than 5, there is a symmetrical inverse operation such as where x is the equilibrium number, x minus 3 and x minus x minus 3 is an inverse operation and similarly x plus 3 and minus x plus 3 
is an inverse operation and they're symmetrical. Now I'm going to show you why these symmetrical inverse operations are the necessary condition for there to be a cycle that fulfills the given definition I have given you of what a cycle is. And indeed, there are such inverse operations in every case, including the following example, which is 3x plus 17, which is exactly the output, I, the sequence I am representing in this circle, in this wheel at the top. Um, so, so what I'm saying is that there uh, is indeed such an inverse operation in every case, including the following example, 3x plus 17, where the inputs, outputs, and results are as follows. So starting with 17, input 17, output 17, we see we have two results, 14 and minus 14, so that's 3 less than 17, and two um, outputs, minus 20 and 20, which we consider 3 more than 17, and that the operations are input 11, output 25, input 13, output minus 1, input 21, output 1, input 23, output 43. So I do need to clarify one thing. In understanding these operations, do not think that the operation, do, do not think the operation sim symbol is just additional subtraction. Actually, it's a quite a simple idea, but the operation is a shift along the number line. So for example, 13, if input 13 has output minus 1, that does not represent a difference of 12, but a shift of minus 14. So that's important to understand this. Now, consider a cycle of 3x plus 17, as we're discussing, and not just the sequence, but critically, its common differences. Common differences are calculated by pairing off the sequence numbers so that the first in each pair is the subtrahend. And those who are not sure what a subtrahend is, it's simply the first number of the pair. So the second one is being subtracted by the subtrahend. So 25 minus 11 is 14. 23 minus 25 is minus 2 and so on. Um, so we're looking at a sequence here. This is the complete sequence of the loop as exactly as it appears in the wheel and it's a clockwise sequence and it begins and ends with 11. And now we've calculated the common differences right the way through and rather remarkably the common differences add up to zero. And this is a true, complete cycle of numbers. It's a loop. And so just to repeat in the left column, there are the integers of the loop in order, as visualized in figure A, the wheel. The first number of the loop, that is the first number to recur again, is the input of x minus 3, which is 14, um, and x minus 6, which is 11. So 11 is actually uh, the first input, and then the common difference is 14. Now, uh, this observation is interesting, but... Um, it's not of singular importance and can be put to one side for this argument. On the right column, there are the common differences of the cycle's integers, which include the symmetrical inverse operations above, the ones I've shaded, 14, 20, minus 14, minus 20. 
Um, it's uh, tempting to think, well, you could just remove these and it would still be a zero sum. Um, but what you're forgetting is the subtraction of the pairs in the sequence, the subtrahends from the minuends, and uh, this would produce a completely different result. Um, so let me just pick this up if I haven't got completely lost. Um, so on the yeah on the right side there are the common differences of the cycle's integers, which include the symmetrical inverse operations above. The common difference is sum to zero. That is the essential property of a cycle. It cannot be a complete cycle without paired inverse operations. That's the whole key. Initially, there might appear to be a problem with the inclusion of the same number 11 twice. It is, in fact, one and the same integer. So we go to the top to the wheel, we'll see there's only one 11. And um, if we look down here, so that, um, that one 11 has um, a previous common difference of 61 and the following common difference of 25. Um, so it only needs to be considered once. And let me just say this. Um, you should realize that a perpetual cycle is actually a single set with each member occurring just once. Think about that. It's a single set. Each member occurs once. So what makes it a cycle? It's simply the sum of common differences being zero. So the idea that the cycle is repeating is in you know over and over again is a mental construct, not a mathematical one. The zero-sum result is a sufficient case for a loop, but this does not imply at all that the zero-sum result is the case for every 3x plus n, where n is greater than 5. Uh, we, we need to say that, that there can be many values of x that do not cycle, even though some do for this value of n. For, for this discussion to be significant, it is necessary only to eliminate the possibility of a zero-sum result for all values of x for 3x plus 1. With 3x plus 1's equilibrium point, which is, as we all know, input 1, output 1, also known as a trivial loop when including even numbers, that's the 2 and the 4. The symmetry of paired inverse operations does not exist. And this is just a function of 1 being the first positive integer. So it's, it's simple because the only inverse operation can be 4 and minus 4. Uh, a complementary inverse pair cannot exist for one. A single inverse operation is self-canceling and cannot produce a cycle. So we need to just keep that in mind that a pair of inverses, inverse operations, do produce a cycle by this switching or crossing of um, of the, of the smaller pair and the greater pair. Um, this just cannot take place with a single inverse pair. Um, the operation is simply self-canceling and cannot produce a cycle. So because the growth of the input-output operation follows the internal behavior shown below, and I'm talking about those numbers down there, it's not possible for there to be another paired inverse 
of common differences for any magnitude of sequential operation for input 3, output, for input 1, output 1. Um, so if we think about 0 as the common difference of 1, input 1, output 1, the series of common differences that follows is like this, and it would be maybe better to put this into some kind of representative formula, but I'm just going to show that it's an expanding um, series. So it's 0, 2, minus 4, 4, minus 2, 6, minus 10, 8, minus 4, 10, minus 16, 12, minus 6, 14, minus 22, 16, minus 8, 18, minus 28, 20, minus 10, 22. So it is a little bit chaotic, but clearly um, it's a divergent series. So we reach our final conclusion. Ergo, since no paired inverse operations can exist for n equals 1 other than minus 4, 4, no zero sum cycle is possible for any magnitude, and hence there can be no complex cycle for 3x plus 1. Thank you.